Now let's talk about Git branches. The idea with Git branches is at any point in time in Git, you can always branch off from where you are. Okay, let me look at a common way of doing development. In a common way of doing development, we have a master branch. Okay, and this master branch always reflects kind of the latest and greatest. It's what you'd often use to release from, for example. If anyone wants to do some development at any point, they would go ahead and branch. So they would just do a git branch, which branches from the current state. So if they're on the master branch, and this is the latest commit, then they do a branch. Now they're on this new branch. And then what would happen is they would do development until they get to some particular commit that they're ready to use. This branch normally, I mean, if you're doing your own development, this is fine, but if you're doing team development, then you would not normally merge this branch back into the master. Okay, well, one thing to keep in mind is often the master has had other changes along the way from other teams. Okay. So you would not normally merge this development branch back into the master without having a code review. So here we would have a code review. What would we be reviewing? Well, we would be reviewing the difference between, well, let's call this branch, let's just call it lab one. Okay, so this is branch lab one. We do a code review between master and lab one, All right? So that would be a code review between basically where we were when we branched from the master to the current state of this lab. That it go out for code review, People would look at it, go back and forth. There might be some changes that happen after that, right? So maybe after the code review, the code review requests additional changes. And then eventually that gets merged back into the main branch. So we merge from lab one into the master. And that happens normally only after the code review has been accepted. So whoever the reviewer is says, yes, please go ahead and put it in. So conceptually what happens is kind of master looks like this. We come out on a branch and then we come back on a merge. Okay. And the master is just continuing on its way, getting updated by various new branches and merges. So we might have a branch here and then it gets merged back in. Or we might have, and this is very common, overlapping branches. So we might have a branch here, comes out, and then let's say merges in perhaps here. When we merge, we have to take care of any particular, any merge conflicts. So if the blue branch and the pink branch both change some particular line on some particular file, then we've got a, a problem. When blue goes into merge, it's considered a merge conflict. And so it's up to the merger then to figure out what the correct line is going to be. So this is how master branch works. All right, so let's say I have gone ahead and created a branch. Okay. And what I am working on is a particular feature. So I'm working on feature one. All right. And I get to a particular point and I do a pull request. That is to say, I request someone to review these changes. Now, I happen to know my reviewer is on a different time zone. Right, so they are in a different time zone and it happens to be the weekend for them right now. But I've got more time today to do other stuff. So I wanna work on feature two. 
Well, I could go ahead and just create a new branch from the master for feature two, but there's a hitch. The hitch is feature two depends on feature one. So I have got to create a new branch from feature one for feature two. All right, and I can then do my work. My codes and my commits. And this is all well and good, right? I can go ahead and check in now. Eventually, once I get my code review, check in this and then go ahead and check in this. Here's the problem though. Let's say, so it's going to take me a while to work on feature two. It's going to take me all next week, let's say. I come back on Monday and I get a code review and the code review says I need to make some changes. In fact, I need to make some changes to my API. That is, I'm going to be making some changes that are going to affect feature two. So I go ahead and make changes. So this is the changes per the code review. I'm still doing back and forth though. I make some initial changes, right? And now uh, I've got those changes. So forget the initial changes. I make our final changes, right? They accept. I'm going to go ahead, I know, and merge this into the master. But meanwhile, I've got this branch based on this initial state of feature one, and I'm missing this part here, those changes. So what I can do now is merge feature one into feature two. And what that will do is basically take this delta here, between where I branched on feature one and where feature one is now and take that delta and apply it into feature two. So that is a very common thing to do. And that's something similar to what we're gonna see happening for us in our lab. So how are we gonna do this with our labs? So in our labs, we don't have a master branch. We just have the latest branch that we're gonna be using. So if we're working on lab one, lab one contains our latest and greatest. If we're working on lab two, it contains everything we did in lab one plus what we're working on in lab two. So in lab one is going to start with just a copy of whatever the upstream lab one is, okay, where upstream is my uh, repository that uh, I initially created, okay, that contains all the starting code. So we're in lab one, what are we going to do? So this is the current commit. First thing we're going to do is we want to somehow label this commit because any changes that we're going to make, that is the code that you want to be code reviewed. That is the code you want to do a pull request on and send to me and have me grade basically. So we're going to go ahead and create a branch, lab one. I suggest calling it lab one no code. Lab one no code is not necessarily the, the, the best name for it, but it is what it is. So lab one no code is going to be a pointer to this commit. And we're never going to change that branch. So how did we get it? We just created, we did a git branch lab one no code. Okay. Then you're going to make a succession of changes, right? So these are all git commits, various git commits. And finally, you're happy, right? You've got, let's say, this commit, and you're happy with this commit, and you want to submit it for a code review. So you are going to do a pull request on GitHub. And you're going to be comparing lab one no code versus lab one. So that is going to be comparing the difference between here and here. Because lab one changes, right? As you continue making commits, lab one refers to the last commit in here, the last commit in here, the last commit in here, and so on. So lab one is this, lab one no code is this. You are going to be submitting a pull request for the delta. You, being hardworking, don't want to wait for me to do the code review 
and go back and forth until we eventually get acceptance. So you want to keep working. How do you keep working? You are going to create lab two. So now we want to work on lab two. How do we get lab two? Well, lab two is going to come from a git checkout of lab two. Okay, so it's going to take all the starter code. There's also a merge we can do just in case I've made any changes to the repository, but basically that's going to be this commit. Okay. And there's a common ancestor back up here eventually. Let's ignore that for a moment. And then what we need to do is bring in all the changes from lab one. Okay, so bring in the changes from here to here. We want to bring them into lab two. So how are we going to do that? We're going to go ahead and do a merge of lab one. And what that's going to conceptually do is take this code and commit it here, roughly. Okay, so that's going to be that merge. It's possible we might have conflict. Unlikely, though, what you would need to change. So now is the starting point that you can actually start coding. Okay? You are going to start coding. However, you need to have something when it's time to do your parole request to reference. That is, what is the starting point that we want here? Well, we don't really have a name for this. So what we're going to do is go ahead and also call this Lab 2, no code. By the way, instead of branches, we could use tags if we want. They're just names for commits. And now we can start making changes. So these are commits. So you're going along. You're doing well in Lab 2. But in the meantime, we are also going back and forth on our code review. And I have had a couple of subsequent commits that I've asked you to make. So lab one now doesn't reference the pull request. It actually references the latest in that branch. Okay. And now let's say I go ahead and approve. So I say this commit, that's fine. Okay. So you've got these changes in lab one. Can we just leave them there? No. Well, can we, can we Merge them with the master. Now, we don't have a master branch. So we're not using one. What we actually want to do is merge this into lab two. It's important that we merge these changes. Some of these changes may be correctness, right? So they may be particular errors or fixing particular errors that were in the code that weren't caught by the auto grader. As well, there may be stylistic changes, indentation, um, naming, uh, comments that I asked you to add, extraneous comments I asked you to remove, and we want those all to be reflected in our latest branch. So what we need to do is get those into lab two. And how do we do that? We just remerge lab one. Okay, so we did an initial merge of lab one, and that got us this part. And now that lab one has actually changed, another merge will get us the remaining changes. That's the process that we're going to be using. If you fail to merge these changes, then when we do the code review here, I'll probably get at you again. That is how we're going to be using git branches for doing our labs.